thank you for uh, welcoming me into the locker room here. You're welcome. Great to have you. This doesn't resemble a locker room I've ever been in. It smells a lot better, too. <laughs> I was an event producer for about five years. When that stopped and the pandemic started, I realized now is the time to spend my entire life savings on what I've always wanted to do, which is build a multifaceted space that is a recording studio and an artist studio and a gallery. All of the above. All of the above. Wow. When the tragedy strikes, you know, there's terrible parts about it, but then there's also things that get born out of the rubble. I wanted to birth something out of rubble. <laughs> During phase two in New York, I sort of noticed that there's this whole vortex of artists who were still here and had all this energy and were feeling really inspired by everything that was transpiring and needed a place to go. We said, let's choose 10 artists and did a lockdown at the locker room. Samara had approached me. She asked me if I wanted to be part of the residency. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, free paste to paint, free supplies. I said, sign me up. Let's go. The synergy was amazing. We call it. What do we call that? Flow tree. We call it flow tree. I like that. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. that. It was amazing. I was able to like pick up different things that these artists do. Like I know me use spray paint and then acrylic paint. Then let me try to do what Jasper does and do some mixed mediums. And there's a lot of room for error and to try new things and to experiment and to like really be confident in what it is you want to do. It really relieves a lot of the weight. You know, you would just come here and you knew that you had a space where you could be free. In a way, it was necessary, you know, as a survival tool, showing that you were alive and that your art wasn't dead. Out of this came an entire album, a documentary film that's coming out in the fall, a whole book of photography, and then 95 paintings wow. that came out of this one month. And, you know, all of it is, is now for sale. The most notable installation that came out of the pandemic in the locker room was New York is Dead, Don't Come Back. There was an article in the New York Post, and the title of it was New York is Dead. You know, he's decrying sort of the final fall of mm -hmm. New York. Jerry Seinfeld retorted back mm -hmm. saying, you know, New York could never die. You know, I sort of wanted to add to that messaging. The commentary we were making is not about, you know, the girl who had to move back to Alabama. It's sort of about people who left New York and took their fortunes elsewhere and were spending money to party in Miami. Mm -hmm. Part of the New York story is that like, there's always this flux of people who would do anything to be here. Come hell or high water. Yeah. What makes New York unique is the people. You know, you guys riding this pandemic out together and finding strength within each other, that really says a lot about the greater city at large. All forward, never straight. Absolutely. <laughs>